Let's have this. And this is Patrick Burns. And we're coming to you from the RMS Queen Mary. Now, what what is the the one thing that you look at and you look at Hans um, Hans Holzer? I mean, here here it is again. You know, it's very controversial from the different perspectives. But what did you really revere about him? What really made you look at some of the things that brought you to the forefront of some of the things that he done, some of the things that he accomplished? He really sold me, uh, John. He, he has a, a gigantic book, it's called Ghosts. It's yes. a big black book, yes. it's about that big. And he, he even <laughs> jokes, he says, if you drop it on your foot, you become a ghost. It's this gigantic book, it's almost yeah. a thousand pages long. It's a collection of various investigations that he right. has done over the years, his, yeah. his case studies. Uh, he really sold me in just the forward chapter of the book where he was going into his analogies, what he believed a ghost was, what he believed, the reason he believed that a ghost might actually, uh, a person might cross over mm -hmm. and might become a ghost. To him, he believed being a ghost is not a natural state. When you die, you are supposed to cross over into the light and being caught between this existence and the next existence is kind of a tormented hell and it's yeah. not a natural natural uh, uh, state for a person's uh, 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 spirit to exist in. And just the way that he explained everything, his analogies of it, just really within lay terms, he really made a very compelling argument to me. Hey, this guy's got some really, really interesting, really good theories here that really just seem to make sense. I mean, who knows if if they're true, if they're partially true, if they're completely incorrect, but they seemed, they just really struck a chord with me. They just really seemed to be very uh, well thought out and very analytical. And which, okay, that's a good thing because that's the way I've always interpreted them, analytical. Yes. And looking at it and some of his, his knowledge, the knowledge base with any of the, you know, pioneers sure. that pushed forward and, right. and did some of the different things, because now you and I have never discussed that, but when you just came up with that analogy, I just sat here and smiled because that was my analogy of some of his work. Yeah. And yeah. it's phenomenal. And yeah. you know, you, you try to understand everybody's sure. different uh, ways and everything. Yeah. Very highly respected in my book. Yes. Now, what was it like growing up with, uh, as, as the nephew of, of, of Ed Warren? Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was an, uh, an interesting thing. It, sure. it, you never knew what to expect. You never knew what was going to happen. And I mean, you would just hear all these stories, you know, yeah. holidays and everything. Because my his mom lived with us. Okay. I mean, you know, I was always like a little kid in a candy store, just waiting to hear these stories. I'll bet. I'll bet. He's Uncle Ed is coming over, and you must have been. And you know, it was just like you know, you want to hear all the ghost stories and everything. And it wasn't until I was 15 where you know I had an experience, and I still remember saying to my uncle, I said to him, you know. I had an experience, you know, I told mom about it and everything, and grandpa was there and everything like that. And he went, yeah. I said, well, I never believed in any of this stuff. He goes, what are you talking about? You never believed in any of this stuff. <laughs> and, and I says, I didn't. I said, never experienced it, never had anything happen. Right. I didn't believe in any of it. Yeah. And, you know, it, it was that intriguing things. But Patrick, what I walked away from, you know, uh, uh, 25 years of uh, uh, being around him and working with him was all the downtime. Yeah. That's what I cherish now. That's what I look at. When he collapsed and he went down, I, I was very grateful. I was with him that morning before he actually went down, and we just talked and we we're going back and forth. But it was all the downtime, the talking, just going back and forth, and him throwing out questions. He, he mind games. This man loved to play them. <laughs> he would play these games and throw these different things and go back and forth, and you know would put you out on investigations and everything, and, and wait to see what you would come back with, and he would correct you if you were wrong. Or if he had his quote unquote way of doing things, sure. you know, you abided by that and you listened to that and you, you would just get into, you know, discussions with him and he would always say, it's this way, it's this way, it's this way. Sure. But I noticed, you know, it was fortunate enough towards, you know, the last few years or anything like with the EVPs and the psychic photography, he started looking at some of the things a little bit more differently. Right, right. And one thing that I remember, and, and it's, it's the craziest thing, is back in his day, it was all reel-to-reel. -reel. Yes, yes. 
And I was like a kid in a candy store at, at different points in time because he wanted me to put them on cassette because cassette at that point in time was a big thing. Right, right. And, you know, I transfer a lot of them different things. And I said to him, I said, Ed, I said, did you ever listen to any of these and hear some of the different voices and different things that are on these? Right. What are you talking about? You know? Uh -huh. And he did. He would go back and forth with uh, some of the things. Him and I would sit and just go over that. And the voices change on the recordings and stuff? Yeah. It was always all that downtime. Yeah. And it was the talking because I would see... Ed as my uncle and as my mentor and my teacher, where the public would just see Ed, the demonologist. Sure, right. So I was always, I always had that little bit extra there. You had a very unique uh, 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 access to him, being yeah. his nephew. He that, was nonstop. I mean, I was in and out of the house, did whatever I want. You know, we worked on different things, went with them any place. You know, that was always accessible. And and I know today that you know, being involved with going into the monasteries and the churches and getting involved with some of the things, the Buddhists and everything like that, most people never really had that opportunity. Right. But I didn't realize it at that point in time. Sure. Now I reflect upon yeah. it. And it's all things that, you know, has helped me to understand the things and, and just look at things from such a wide open perspective. Yeah. That That's what I walked away with that's great. from him. That's great. Yeah, yeah talking about Hans Holzer, um, you know, again, he, he really comes from a different school of thought, a yeah. uh, different era. And, uh, you know, I was talking about the electronics, and he thought, you know, the thermometers, the temperature gauges, the moisture gauges. He said, eh, it's all nonsense, blah, 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 blah. You need a deep transmedium. I said, well, what do you think about EVP? Mm -hmm. And he looked at me, and he kind of cocked his head when I explained to him a little bit about, about EVP, and he was really absorbing what I was telling him mm -hmm. and really, really picking up on what I was talking about, electronic voice phenomena. I was like, oh, my God, I'm schooling my mentor here. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. Yeah. Over EVPs, the both exactly. of us going back and forth with two prominent people and getting into these in-depth conversations about EVP. Yeah, and they wild. Just, and, and and to them, it was like that was that was a whole avenue that they had never even explored. Really, they yeah. might have been partially familiar with what right. it was, but never really took it seriously yes. because they were so concentrated, so set in their ways yeah. in how they were conducting their investigations that yeah. they just never really even had a chance to explore that. Yeah. Now, here's an, another interesting avenue, just talking about that, too, because even though we, we know they, none of them got along, Ed, Ed right. and they didn't get along or anything like that, but yet even, you and I just sitting here talking about another common thread between the both of them, my uncle was a very firm believer in having a psychic and a medium with you on investigations. Mm -hmm. So here again, you know, you just look at these things. Yeah, maybe they, they agreed on more things than they disagreed yeah, on. Yeah, it, it, it's a possibility. Yeah. But, but you just look at that, but the knowledge base of uh, your mentor, my mentor, look at what we've walked away with and look at what you know we're able to bring forth to all the new paranormal investigators, Absolutely. which is phenomenal.